Hello once again. Uh, we're going to be starting today on the tidy verse. Now, the tidy verse uh, is a set of packages uh, that have all come together, sort of under it's a, sort of a, it's sort of a, a theory of how data should be treated, uh, in other words. So uh, it's all sort of organized by a guy called Hadley Wickham, who's a, that's a name that will probably come up if you start googling about R, uh, and he created the tidy verse, uh, and it's a way of it's a very consistent way of dealing with packages that works just a little bit better. Uh, than base R. Uh, in particular, when we get to the dplyr part of the tidyverse, I find that particularly useful. Uh, I didn't think that I'd be able to use R for any actual serious projects until I learned dplyr. We'll get to that. Uh, so we're going to start out with just the regular tidyverse and we're going to see what that looks like. So we're going to start out uh, loading in the same data we've been working with the whole time. Okay, um, But also we're going to go ahead and load in the tidyverse. Now, uh, tidyverse uh, is is collected in a library called tidyverse okay but as it gets a little bit confusing um, there are some tidyverse packages that are not included in the tidyverse itself so sometimes you'll have to load other stuff so you can see sort of what it's in here it's, it's loading a bunch of packages inside of itself so what do we got in here? We got ggplot2, we'll talk about that one later. We got tibble, we'll talk about that today. Uh, we got tidyr, we got readr, we got purr, uh, we got dplyr, which we'll talk about. We got stringr, which is a very good way of working with string variables. We don't have super great ways of doing that in base r. You have to learn like grep, which is a hard command. Um, and uh, so it's also overwriting some uh, commands that we use elsewhere. So for example, there's a lag function in base R. We're going to use dplyr, or we're going to use a, a tidyverse's version of uh, lag instead. Anyway, so one of the main things to do that, that the tidyverse does is it introduces a data type called tibble. Now all that a tibble is, is it is a data frame with some extra couple bells and whistles, right? Just like remember long, long ago, I said that data frames were basically matrices with some extra bells and whistles. Well, tidy, some, the tibble adds uh, some extra bells and whistles on top of that too. So uh, how can we get a tibble? Well, all we got to do is take a data frame and tell it to be a tibble. Simple as that. So we're going to create a tibble version of wage1. All right. So let's call it wage1.t. Just to remind ourselves that it's a tibble. Then we do as.tibble with wage1. So there we go. So now we have a tibble. Looks just like wage1, only a couple of differences. Uh, and really, by the way, remember, uh, any tidyverse function that you use that outputs a data set is going to output a tibble version of that data set. Okay? So, what can we do to tibble? Let's, let's start by just looking at our data. So, let's look at wage one, the original version, with head to look at the top of it. So, you can see what it does here. Uh, so, it gives us all the variables, it sort of gives us the first six rows. Now, let's do the exact same thing uh, with our tibble version. So it's doing a couple things different here. So first of all, notice that it's telling us the type of variable that we're working with, right? It's telling us that all of these are doubles, double numeric variables, in particular doubles, that tells us how, how much precision the variable has. That can be useful information. And also it's not gonna, you know, overload our screen with a whole bunch of variables. It says, you've seen enough, here's the rest, right? Uh, so that's one thing we can do. We can look uh, at the data with head. It works a little bit better. Uh, we can also skip head entirely and use the glimpse function, which gives us a very quick look at the data in a way that, that looks a little bit better. So if we do that, uh, instead of going uh, row by row, it gives us everything sort of a, in a horizontal frame, which lets us see a whole lot more information. Again, so it's showing us the variable name, the type of variable that it is, and we don't have to just see the first six, we can see the first six or seven, and then it trails off. And now it's actually going to show us all the variables that we might want to see, okay? Uh, there are other nice things to do with tibbles, but really most of the time you can just treat them like a data frame, right? It's just a slightly better data frame, so I can, you know, get at stuff with dollar sign if I want to do the mean of wage1.t dollar sign wage. It'll work just like it used to, okay? Generally treat it like a data frame. And you can put it into, into linear models just like a data frame, right? If you're doing LM, you say data equals wage 1.t, it'll, it'll know, it'll figure out how to do it. Now the one downside with tibbles uh, is that it doesn't quite play as nice with Stargazer, right? So we've been using Stargazer, for example, to get summary statistics, and Stargazer will still work just fine uh, for regression objects, but for summary statistics, Stargazer wants a data frame, not a tibble. Okay, so that's not a huge problem. If we want to use uh, Stargazer to uh, get our 
summary statistics, uh, what we can do is we just have to feed it back through and turn it into a data frame again. Stargazer, uh, we need to make it a data frame. So we just say stargazer and just as data frame, which turns it, it turns wage1.t back into wage1 essentially. Right, and then it'll give us the summary statistics. And of course I want to do type equals text. And once it finishes doing that, it will give us back the summary statistics that we want. We just have to turn it into a data frame first. Works perfectly fine, okay? Now you might be thinking, uh, is that really worth turning it into a tibble? Right now I gotta work harder to use Stargazer with it. Uh, it shows me the type of variable, but who cares? Glimpse is kind of neat, but whatever. Um, but believe me, once we start getting into other parts of the, of the tidyverse, it's gonna end up being worth it. Now there is one other part of the tidyverse that I want to talk about immediately, and it's actually a part that's not in the base tidy R package, and it's called Haven. So it's another package. We're going to load it in library Haven, uh, and what Haven is is it's a way of reading in. It's like kind of like the foreign package that we've been using all along, uh, except that it reads things in as tibbles, and it does a little bit of a better job with it. And in particular, one thing that it does differently is it preserves something called variable labels. Okay, so uh, if you're working in a different statistics package, something that you might see a lot of the time is what's called a variable label. Uh, so uh, there, this means two things. One, uh, so instead of when we look at our data set, you know, it might say wage, um, but you know, what does wage mean? Is that hourly wage? Is that weekly wage? Whatever. We might want a little description of what that means. Uh, and in a lot of data, in a lot of uh, statistics packages, you can have that description immediately imprinted in your data set. So if Stata will do that, for example, uh, or allow for it. Another thing that it can mean is you can have valued labels. Uh, so for example, we have female equals one and zero. Wouldn't it be nice if it was explicit that one was female and zero was male? Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, and a lot of packages will allow that as well. Uh, and now, if you want to do that yourself uh, in R, you can. Uh, you'll need the SJ MISC package, SJ Miscellaneous, which is uh, also Tidyverse compatible, and you can do your own um, variable labels and things like that. It also has a nice function find underscore var, find underscore var, which helps you search through the different variable names that you have and also the different variable labels. But that's neither here nor there. What Haven will do is if the data set has variable labels, it will keep them in the data set uh, and it will let you see them. Okay, so uh, I'm actually not sure if this if this Wilders data set has variable labels, but let's see. Uh, read in Wildridge data as a tibble directly, All right? And this is, as you recall, a stata file .dta. So instead of um, using read .dta, we're going to use the Haven function read underscore dta, right? Reads it in just the same, the exact same data set. If I click on it. Uh, it does not have any variable labels, but if it did, it would have written them right here. Like it would say education, years of education. Okay, so that's a nice thing right there. If you have some labeled data from another statistics package, you can read it in. It will remember it all. It can keep those labels and understand them. All right, that's a very basic introduction to the tidyverse. And at this point, you're probably wondering why you would bother learning any of this or why it's advanced. But believe me, like I said, uh, it will it will come together if, as you keep watching the videos. And so I recommend going on to the next video where we'll be talking about reshape uh, and merging. See you there.